Sorry. We're by Delgo. Oh, I'm not being searched. Don't Where's touch me, sir. Don't not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Where's your ID? I have ID on me. Do not touch Where's me, sir. ID? Do not touch me. Do not touch me, sir. Now he's on. Now you're on. The what, what am I doing? Yo, 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 Sesh Studios. No, I'm just fucking with you. We are live at Sesh Studios, though. This is your host, Mel Gibson. Not the actor. Your favorite MC's favorite MC. 4 5th Connection rapping. Sig on the back. And today, we're going to talk about a very important topic up for discussion today in society and that topic today ladies and gentlemen is police brutality yes police brutality because it seems to me that nowadays there's always an incident of police brutality every few days somewhere usually concentrated in the inner city areas you know where there's a lot of people but first let us define what police brutality is so the definition of pol police brutality is as follows and i quote police brutality is the abuse of authority by the unwarranted infliction of excessive force by personnel involved in law enforcement while performing their official duties the term is also applied to abuses abuses excuse me by corrections personnel in municipal state and federal penal facilities including military prisons while the term police brutality is usually applied in the context of causing physical harm it may also involve psychological harm through use through the use of intimidation tactics beyond the scope of officially sanctioned police procedure in the past those who engaged in police brutality may have acted with the implicit approval of the local legal system Example, during the civil rights movement era, in the modern era, individuals who engage in police brutality may do so with the tactic approval of their superiors, or they may be rogue officers. In either case, they may perpetrate their actions under color of law, more often than not engage in a subsequent cover-up of their illegal activity. Sounds like uh, the NYPD. The word brutality has several meanings. The sense used here, savage cruelty, was first used in 1633. The term police brutality has been in use since at least 1833 when it appeared in the London paper, The Poor Man's Guardian. So basically, police brutality has, has, has always been a part of society. And, uh... I noticed a pattern that this is starting to happen, especially where I live in New York City, because uh, I'm from New, you know, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from New York City, Gun Hill, side of here, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I've noticed that, particularly in the boroughs of Brooklyn and the Bronx, there's a lot of police brutality. You know, most of the cases that we hear about in the news either come from Brooklyn or the Bronx. Now, I was looking online today, you know, doing my research. You know, because uh, you got to be educated now in this day and time. You can't just uh, bring stuff up and not know the facts. So, I'm checking out on the tab right here on the iPad. I'm talking about the top five... Worst NYPD brutality moments. Abner Louima. What happened to Abner Louima would have been disturbing if it happened in Abu Ghraib prison. Abner Louima was at a club in Brooklyn when a fight broke out. Policeman Justin Volpe mistake, mistakenly took Louima for a man who sucker punched him earlier in the night and began, began beating him up on the street. Officers took Luima back to the precinct where Volpe continued to beat him. Volpe kicked him in the testicles. I'm sure that's in the NYPD handbook. 
and sodomized him with a broomstick, causing critical internal damage. After he was done, Volpe proudly displayed the excrement and bloodstained broomstick to his co-workers and boasted that he had broken a man. He then threatened to kill Luima and his family if he told anyone. He admitted in court to sodomizing Luina, Luima excuse me, and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Only one other cop involved in the incident, Chris Schwartz, served any time. Luima sued the city successfully for $5.8 million. So, a man, check this, so in layman's terms, a man, right? A man, first of all, outside of a nightclub, was mistaken, was mistaken by this officer, Justin Volpe, for another man who he had a physical confrontation with. So because of a case of mistaken identity, this man, Abner Luma, was basically pummeled and sodomized with a broomstick. And to make matters worse, he was, oh, oh, I, I remember his teeth being knocked out, also with the same broomstick. So, just because of mistaken identity, this man was, was savagely beat up, like, basically like an animal, you know? And then, people wonder, you know, why there's messed up relationships between, you know, the community and the police, you know, because... The police continue to do these things, and they continue to get away with them. Let's give another example. Sean Bell. Sean Bell was killed on the morning of his wedding day at a strip club in Queens. After leaving the nightclub, Bell and his friends were confronted by a plainclothes officer who did not identify himself. When Bell sped off, the officer, along with his backup, let off 50 rounds into Bell's vehicle, killing him and severely injuring his friends. Although nobody in the car was found with a gun, police continued to smear Bell's character after the incident as if Bell and his friends were under investigation and not the officers. The officers were charged with manslaughter, reckless endangerment, and assault, but were all acquitted. Protests erupted all over New York, and Al Sharpton was arrested. Now, one would argue, let me, let me make this very clear, and, and I should have said this in the beginning before I started recording, you know what I'm saying? Let me make this very clear. I am in no way an advocate of violence towards anybody. Violence towards civilians or violence toward police officers. You know what I'm saying? But there's a certain disconnect between the hood and the cops. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I'm trying to open up this dialogue with this. I'm not trying to cause no trouble. We're not trying to, you know, I'm not, I'm not out here on this podcast telling, telling folks to go kill other folks or telling folks to go injure folks and none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But this is a subject in society that has to be, you know, it has to be addressed. You know what I'm saying? It has to be addressed. Looking at my fans on the live. Shout outs to, shout outs to Kevlar. Shout outs to Big DFTP. I see you guys. Shout outs to Young OG Daddy as well. Um, yeah, so, uh. You know this 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 uh you know this is a subject that has remained I guess kind of taboo in society but but it is one of those subjects that needs to be addressed because if like I said before if it's not addressed it's going to keep happening you know people need to inform themselves and people need to learn the law a little better you know um I noticed that you know I, most of the time the people targeted you know, are, are, are smeared and made to look like, you know, like less than human or subhuman. And, and there's just a total, like, n disregard for human life, you know, within 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 a lot of law enforcement. And I notice a lot of law enforcement are militarizing nowadays and they're just, they're just getting more militarized and, you know, like, they're using, unne you know, unnecessary force, you know. Uh... Let's go to another incident. Everybody knows about Amadou Diallo. Uh, he's an African immigrant from the Republic of Guinea who, despite his education, works selling DVDs and socks on 14th Street. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. You got to get in where you fit in. While studying at night. While returning to his home after a meal, he caught the eye of five officers who believed he fit the description of a serial rapist. Again, another mistaken identity. The officers followed him to his apartment door. When Diallo reached into his jacket, a police officer yelled gun and officers let off 41 shots, 19 hitting Diallo. No gun was found on him, only a wallet he pulled out to identify himself. So, this man was mistaken for somebody else, followed to his house, to his door, and when he reached out to pull his ID, shot 19 times. Now, 
They let off 41 shots. Five officers letting for letting off 41 shots. I let the people decide. Does that sound excessive or not? Hit me up. Let me know what you think. DM me. Uh, if anybody's on the live, answer that question. Do you think that was excessive? It's another example. Randolph Evans. 15-year-old Randolph Evans was shot and killed on Thanksgiving night in 1976. Officer Robert Torsney was called to a housing project in Brooklyn to investigate a man with a gun. He met with a group of young black men and proceeded to shoot the unarmed Evans for no given reason. Although he was never treated for epilepsy, Torsney's defense maintained that he killed Evans because of a rare case of epilepsy and he was acquitted on the grounds of mental insanity. So he wasn't treated for epilepsy, but he was acquitted on the grounds of mental insanity. These, another, this is a that was a Brooklyn incident. So I mean, this is a fit. Mind you, first of all, this is a minor that that they clipped. So, oh, okay. I haven't really discussed any female victims, but I have. Here's the last story. Albertus. Bruel, forgive me if I say the name wrong, was a 57-year-old church-going city worker. Her only crime was living in the wrong neighborhood. Cops believed that there was a large amount of guns, drugs, and vicious dogs in her Harlem apartment. Without knocking, they battered the door in and threw a flash grenade into her apartment. No warrant. Although they found no weapons or drugs in her apartment, they handcuffed her. Despite the fact that she told them she had a heart problem, it took an hour and a half to get her to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. So, not only a case of excessive force without a warrant, but also a case of negligence. This woman obviously needed medical attention and was not given the proper medical attention. So, I, I would understand why, uh, why it would be negligence. Uh, Big D FTP. Big D FTP, my man Big D. Yes, no accountability. Cops being acquitted promotes cops to continue to do whatever. I agree with you, brother. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. You know, it's it's very unfortunate that uh nowadays, you know, the cost of a life is just it's like it's it's so meaningless. It's like life is so meaningless. People people are so quick to shoot, you know. And and uh, Big D FTP also comments on the live. Also, dehumanizing people is horrible. Yes, it's degrading the way people are treated, you know. Um, and the thing is, the thing is, New York's long history of police brutality it goes back all the way to when the NYPD was in its beginning phases, and I was. Reading this as well. Crime in 1856 was far more widespread than it had been years earlier. The increase in crime was always blamed on the ever-increasing population of the city, climbing to 629,810 by 1855. That was, that, was, that was a lot of people by 1855 standards. You feel me? The number of residents approached a million by the very end of the 1860s. In 15 years, the population almost doubled. That's crazy in New York City. And police chiefs used the population in their reports to the mayor and board of aldermen, constantly whining that the huge number of people meant more crime. It was not the inept police. It was the population. In 1855, Walt Whitman called New York one of the most crime-haunted and dangerous cities in Christendom. He added that by the time the criminal element in the city had been joined by new robbers and murderers who had moved to Gotham from other states such as California after the gold rush there. They were, he said, thieves expelled some of them from distant San Francisco, vomited back among us to practice their criminal occupations. Crime was so prevalent and the police were still so inept that Whitman warned visitors not to walk around alone at night and not to trust anybody. Any affable stranger who makes friendly offers is very likely to attempt to swindle you as soon as he can get you into confidence. Mind your own business, he wrote. Now, the NYPD had uh, had a big press 
thing about how to stop crime. The cops on the first professional police force were told to be as tough as they were hired. As soon as to be as tough as soon as they were hired, the old constable had not be had not only been ineffective but weak. Killers, robbers, and gangbangers had gotten away with murder for decades, and the public was sick and tired of it. The new officers were told to use as much force as they felt necessary to apprehend criminals and the stem of ev of the ever ever rising crime wave. Sorry, I'm bad at this. A common practice was to crack criminals over the head or across the back of the neck with their thick 14 inch long wooden nightsticks or billy clubs, regardless of the consequence. Kind of sounds like today, don't you think? Police pushed, shoved, and kicked men down the street. Ears were pulled hard and throats were put in a vice hold, a la Eric Gardner. Knee pressure was applied to the lower back. Ankles were kicked and feet were stomped on. Usually the nightstick blow to the head knocked men down, unconscious, and sometimes Victor later, victims later suffered brain damage. Police argued that their job often made it impossible to keep the peace without violence. Patrolman Whaling found himself... Whaling, what a name. Found himself the cop on the beat in a neighborhood in which most of the tenants on the east side of the street were English and those on the west side were Irish. There were at least a dozen fights per night and the nearly and they were nearly impossible to break up. After dusk, the life of a policeman who patrolled the beat alone was not worth much, but by a severe course of discipline the neighborhood was made safe. This was the necessary force, I say that in quotations needed to subdue a prisoner and was considered acceptable by police, city officials, and the, poli and the public. The new police thought nothing of keeping control of a recently arrested prisoner by using their nightsticks. Some refined their technique by wrapping the stick in one or two handkerchiefs so that there would be no marks on it after a beating. Others only hit arrestees in soft places on the body so there would be no bumps or bruises to show violence. Many, went, many men were brought into the jail and then hidden from the public were beaten badly. Suspects and criminals investigations were often beat up, kicked downstairs, and shoved against walls in the priest house and forced to confess the crimes. This was soon dubbed the third degree and it became an acceptable form of brutality. Force was often excessive. So, the NYPD has basically has a history of this. The police also found that the immediate use of force quickly established their superiority in any confrontation, and the more that the criminals knew that, the fewer problems there would be. Police often plunged into a crowd of street toughs, hitting several of them over their head with the nightsticks. This measure often brought success and overall built up the image of the policemen as strict protectors of the law who got their way. Their captains not only looked the other way in cases of brutality, but encouraged the officers to use whatever force they thought necessary to achieve their goals. A famous phrase was that the patrolman needed to do whatever had to be done to uphold the law. Officers did not accept verbal abuse either, whether the, from those they arrested or bystanders. The cop had to maintain law, and to do that, he had to be violent. I repeat, the cop had to maintain law, and to do them, he had to be violent. People soon began smiling at cops as they passed them on the street or tipping their hats. Men and women wished them a nice day or a good evening. Cop questions were always answered with a yes officer or a yes sir somewhere in the conversation. Within a, near, within a year, New Yorkers feared the new police and intimidated were congenial toward them. There is no remedy for the insulting language, said one New York captain, but personal chastisement. So, this has always been the policy. In a nutshell, this has always been the policy of the NYPD. They go in there, taking names, kicking ass, chewing bubblegum, and that's what they do. But, you know, these situations don't always call for physical altercations. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of unnecessary brutality out there in these streets, and a lot of people are losing their lives, you know. Uh, they're trying to turn it... Big D FTP says making a us versus them scenario right they're trying to play people against people people against policemen policemen against people well policemen against civilians so here's my thing right now I believe that you know policemen are supposed to protect and serve the people so 
if they're supposed to be protecting and serving, why are there so many... In, in in the NYPD in particular, why are there so many cases of of police brutality? Last year alone, 2018, I just read this earlier as well. Last year alone, in the year 2018, the NYPD settled, it was, I think it was $384 million for five cases of police brutality and, and, and corruption. That's $384 million in just a short time span of five years. That's a lot of bread for something that a lot of people believe is not happening on these streets. But the fact is that, you know, officers are armed, so they're already at an advantage. You know, it's illegal to have a gun here in New York. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's and, you know, for you to have a gun in New York... The laws are so strict, you know, even though the Second Amendment grants us the right to bear arms, you know, like in urban places like here, you know, there's so many strict requirements to have a firearm. Like I've been down south where everybody has a firearm and there's less violence. So, you know, police having firearms and civilians having no firearms or not being able to defend themselves, you know, it, it becomes an issue. And... I feel like, you know, let me let me just state once again that I'm not, my opinion is my opinion. I'm not biased toward the hood niggas. I'm not biased toward the hood. I'm not biased toward the police. I'm just giving people my standpoint. And my standpoint is this, that unless there is a life-threatening situation that somebody is being threatened no police officers use any kind of violence against a civilian. For example, if someone's getting arrested for drugs, they should not have their face against the fucking wall. They should just be cuffed and taken away. Now, if somebody has a gun, shoot them to hell. Fuck it. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Why do I say that? Because, you know, everybody... It's human instinct, and nobody could tell me this. If anybody disagrees with me, let me know. It is human instinct that when you feel your life is in danger we panic it's, and it's not always a it's not always a, a physical panic or oh my god but the brain goes into overload and you know you're going to do whatever it is to preserve your life you know what i'm saying i don't know how many how many people out there have you know have been faced behind the barrel of a gun coming from you know you're, you're up on the street or or facing the end of a gun of a, of a police officer, you know what I'm saying? But anybody anybody gets a gun pointed at them, a gun's, out, a gun's out there to maim people. They're there to kill people. They're not there to pacify people, you know? And when people see a gun right away, you know, you, you know gun turn men to mice. I've seen the hardest, the hardest, the hardest, the hardest gangsters, the hardest dudes out there turn real bitch made and real soft once they once once that thing come out you know what i'm saying and that's that's a natural human reaction you know nobody wants to die unless unless you know unless you got a death wish but nobody wants to die and nobody wants to die like that you know what i'm saying especially the random shootings and things like that you know what i'm saying or well, nobody wants to be a police statistic of somebody who got shot and and the officers will just get acquitted and you know what I'm saying like in the last 15 years only four I think four officers have been convicted of of any kind of police brutality and those are two involved in the Abner Louima case and I can't remember the other two right now but out of so many so many lawsuits the majority of them were settled out of court so I mean if if this 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 statistic is so staggering like i mean what is it you know a lot of people would say that it's a, it's a color thing and i have to agree to disagree you know what i'm saying because you know a lot of people would feel it's a color thing yes like i said most of the cases of of police brutality come out of the bronx and brooklyn you know and those are two boroughs that are populated with mostly colored folk you know, people of different races, you know what I'm saying? Minorities, quote-unquote minorities, you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, most of the people that police 
our our neighborhoods are not from our neighborhoods. So it creates this like this uh, this this divide. Yes, this div- thank you, Phil. This divide between people and it's just it, it turns into a volatile situation because you know when when you know when people when people don't live in the neighborhood they don't understand the people in the neighborhood so people would see certain people and make their assumptions now i had i had put up a video earlier of of some police brutality that happened in my neighborhood. You know, I'm from, I'm from the north side. I'm from uh, East Gun Hill Road in 212. Shout outs to uh, Bainbridge in 212. You know what I'm saying? Shout outs to my block. You know, shout outs to Rosham, Decalb, Jerome. But um, this incident took place on Decalb, on Decalb Avenue. And, um, you know, we're going to run the footage later. And, you know, we're going to let, once after, you know, all this is going to be edited together, we're going to let the people, you know, make their own judgment based on the camera angles that I've been sent by my CIs personally involved in, in the situation because these are people these are people from my neighborhood these are people I see every day these are people that are just like me normal folks you know what I'm saying and and you know I'm not gonna put nobody on blast you know what I'm saying but I had put up a preview earlier of the video actually clips of the video and a very good friend of mine, I won't mention her name either, she hit me up and she asked me, you know, what was the context of the videos, like what exactly happened that situation. At the time, I didn't understand, you know, because I had only heard about it, you know, we had only heard the commotion because we were close by when the situation happened. You know, we had we had only seen the video and we had only heard, you know, the gist of it, you know, but um, one of the persons involved in the incident... Uh, we spoke earlier and he, you know, filled me in and, you know, and I'm here just to give my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what I'm here for. You know, if anybody would like to debate me on this, that's cool. You could always inbox me and we could debate this on a further episode or whatever the case may be, you know, but, um, from what I was told, well, actually, let me, let me first, let me get to the, to, to the video that I put up earlier. Sorry. Where'd Vidal go? I'm being searched. Don't touch me, sir. Don't not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Where's your ID? I have ID on me. Do not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Do not touch me, sir. Now he's on the. Now you're on the. What am I doing? Yo, 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 yo. What am I doing? Yo, 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 Sorry. Where'd Vidal go? I'm being searched. Don't touch me, sir. Don't not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Where's your ID? I have ID on me. Do not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Do not touch me, sir. Now he's on the. Now you're on the. What am I doing? Yo, 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 y
But now, a friend of mine hit me up. I'm not going to mention her name, like I said. And I know her dude. Her dude is a very good friend of mine. And he happens to be an NYPD officer. And another gentleman that I don't know, because my page is public and open. And if you want to check it out, 4 Fifth Management on Instagram. That's F O U R 5th, 5 T H Management. And, um,. This gentleman, it was pretty obvious that he was, you know, he was a, either an NYPD officer or an NYPD supporter. And it was pretty obvious because his default pick was an American flag. <laughs> you know, tough guy that won't show his face. I'm not going to mention his name either, but he proceeded basically to kind of badger me. You know, without knowing me, he saw the video and you could tell he was obviously a cop or, like I said, a defender of cops or a supporter of cops. But he proceeded to tell me that I was uneducated and, and ignorant and blah, 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 blah. And that the people in the video didn't look like, like, like they were, uh, they didn't look like, uh, quote unquote, Christians or whatever it was. I don't know what it was. He's basically that they, that they looked a certain way so that they deserved what they got. You know, and, and my thing is, you know, people could look a certain way, you know, but you can't classify all people like that. You know what I'm saying? Like what happened in this incident was a total lack of communication between the police and the people. You know, uh, it was it was an abuse of power by the police. You know what I'm saying? There were two gentlemen over there. I was told, uh, well, there was quite a few people and I was told that. Originally, the incident started with a cop car full of full of officers coming up because there was a group of people in front of this building congregating. Not really too sure what they were doing. I was told I was told that they were just hanging out there. You know, people hang out in front of this building all the time. We walk by, see our friends, say hello. You know, and the thing is, you know. This is our neighborhood, so we should be able to congregate in our neighborhood without fear of being locked up, you know? Especially if we're not doing elite, anything illegal, you know? And, and I get it, you know? It's the hood. There's a lot of illegal activity in the hood. But you can't put everybody in the hood in that classification. You know, not everybody in the hood is an animal. You know, not everybody in the hood is, is a drug dealer or, you know, whatever. So, so I was told that, that out of these group of people, there was one female present in the, in the beginning. There was one female present and she made comments to the police officers about them harassing people and people were laughing at the cops. So apparently these police officers, let me use the correct term because I want to be politically correct because I don't want people to feel like I'm insulting them. So these officers came back apparently about an hour, an hour and a half later with more cop cars with backup. Now, I was also told that some people were drinking in public. Okay, fair enough. And a lot of people are going to use that as an argument. I'm being searched. Don't and as a reason that the cops use their right force. Do not touch me. Where's your right ID on me? Do not touch Where's me, right sir. Day? Do not touch me. That's not a, an arrestable no, offense. What, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Drinking in public is a ticketable offense. So it's not something that somebody should be cuffed for. Now, I saw the video. And when the cops, when the video starts, you can right away tell that there's, there's, there's tension. Automatically. Automatically. You know? And um, I was told that the cops came back. With backup, uh, they were taking out handcuffs. They were handcuffing people for an offense, drinking in public, that is a ticketable offense. This is not an offense that people should be locked up for, you know? And that one of the gentlemen pulled out his phone, turned it on, 
yes, turned on his phone because you know nowadays every device has a damn has a has a damn camera. You know, turned on his phone and record and was recording the internet. Now I know out there a lot of officers say they don't like to be taped, but there is no law. Let me repeat this: there is no law that says that you cannot tape a police officer, even if he tells you otherwise. So you know, people are not stupid anymore. People are waking up. People are studying law. You know, they're reading law books and they're you know they're taping everything so they can back up what they say because you know at the end of the day it's your word against the police officer in a court of law and automatically a court of law is going to take the side of those enforcing this supposed or these supposed laws so you have to you know you have to have some kind of proof of what's going on and a lot of cops as soon as you turn on a camera they get a, they get upset i've seen it done before you know, and and apparently this gentleman turned on his camera and the cops right away turned their attention to him and they grab him up and basically take him to the floor and rub his face on the floor. And apparently this young man was injured. You know, uh, I saw pictures of his injuries. Uh, he's got some scrapes on his face. He's got a little eye jammy, you know. And the thing is, you know, like I said, and, and th these two young men were later released that same day, not charged with any crime, just basically beaten, humiliated, arrested, and then brought back to the neighborhood. So, I mean, this is this is the point I'm trying to make, and I'm, I, I will play the footage later. The footage will be edited into this podcast once again. So, like I said, this is my thing. As long as nobody's not a physical threat to nobody else... People shouldn't use the, the police shouldn't use excessive force. It's wrong. You know what I'm saying? And this person that I that I went back and forth with for a little while because I went to work out earlier. You know, because I'm a mixed martial artist, former professional wrestler. You know, and this person was basically you know back and forth for me. You know, and. I didn't have the whole story, so I invited this per person on the public forum on this podcast to debate with me, and he refused. Typical. You know, people people, people say that they're strong about their convictions, and they stand behind their convictions, but when you challenge them to a debate, to a respectable debate, you know, uh, they, they, they right away, you know, shit their pants, you know? And the thing is, you know, uh, this gentleman called me uneducated and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I'm here discussing this, you know, like I said, with no, I'm not partial to either side. You know what I'm saying? I'm just reporting what I see. And what I see is excessive force, brutality, police brutality. Those two young men should have never been, you know, taken to the ground like that. And dealt with in that manner. Even if somebody, like I said, even if it's, even if somebody's out there selling fucking drugs you know what i'm saying this shit just doesn't happen it happens mostly out here in the city that shit don't happen in the burbs people 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 go out there and shoot people and they're taken without incident without one without firing one shot and mind you these are people that have guns so i mean why is the 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 treatment preferential to those who live in the burbs and not here you know, it seems to me like, like this is like, you know, like I said before, this is an inner city thing. I don't know if it's a color thing. Some people would argue that it is. You know what I'm saying? Some people will argue that it is. In my opinion, I think it's a class thing. You know what I'm saying? Basically, if you got money nowadays, you either have or have not. You know, and if you got money, you're a have. If you don't got money, you're a have not. You know, and it seems to me like these people are being targeted, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's wrong, you know, like there's no, like I said, there's no reason that people should be forcefully put hands upon, assaulted, and you know, unless they're posing a threat to anybody. And I look, once again, we're talking about this video that someone sent me from the neighborhood I live in. 
you know, and the numbers, this is what kills me, right? It's already, all right, you know, I'm, I, I do combat sports. I believe in a one-on-one -on -one fair fight, man-to-man, toe-to-toe, you know what I'm saying? Until one man can't stand no more, you know? And, you know, shout out to all my warriors out there that feel the same way. But you already at a disadvantage because a police officer is the law, and he is supposed to be enforcing that law. Second of all, you are an unarmed civilian. Police officer is, is an armed officer of the law. So you are already at a disadvantage. You know what I'm saying? Of course people are going to normally be fearful if the police, if they're always encountering the police and they come out with a whole bunch of other officers to arrest two guys. In the video, I swear to you, there was probably about, I would say, about six officers, maybe seven officers confronting one young man and then another maybe six or seven confronting another young man. So I would say there was about 14, 15 officers that came for two guys. You know, I just think it's excessive and unnecessary. And the fact is, you know, that thing could have went left in so many ways. There was innocent people out there. There were people that came to see what was going on with the commotion. You know, and earlier in in the week, actually, then this is my personal thing, I, I had walked up DeKalb Avenue and I had seen police officers with riot shields going into somebody's building but not coming out with an arrest. So it's obvious, you know, that the NYPD has some kind of agenda. You know? And... This, this thing, you know, it has to, it has to be, it has to be addressed because this is a danger, you know, that could have been, you know, that could have been anybody. And I eat, I had, um, inboxed the mayor of New York, the mayor's office. I had inboxed uh, Senator Corey Johnson, I think it is as well about the, these incidents, you know, and I still have yet to receive a response. Thanks de Blasio. And the thing is that, you know. That could be anybody's brother. That could be anybody's father. That could be anybody's son. It could even be a female. You know? So, the danger is real. You know what I'm saying? The danger is real and the danger is there. And, you know, people... I'm not saying this to, to be an asshole. You know? Like I said, I'm not biased at all. And, and I'm going to say this. And I'm not talking about the incident in my neighborhood I'm not talking about this incident so let me make that very clear but a lot of people when approached by cops police officers right they right away get aggressive and get a nasty tone you know what I'm saying and in my dealings with police officers you know I respect the next man just as I would like to be respected so you treat people how you would like to be treated but respect goes two ways you know, so if people are going to feel disrespected when they're getting rolled up on every day, of course they're going to say something about it. They have a right to say, you know, freedom of speech. This is this is this this is the this is United States of America. These are the principles on which this country was founded upon, you know, so. I mean, I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, you know what I'm saying? But people are entitled to say what they want without, you know, they should be able to say what they want without consequence. And that's what this is, you know, this is this is a violation of, of human rights, like basically. Like it's like, it's like, like I said before, there's no regard for, for human life. Like it's like a life is so cheap nowadays, like you could just be shot for no reason. You know, reaching in your reaching in your pocket to get a fucking wallet clipped, mistaken for somebody else outside the club, get fucking sodomized, teeth knocked out, people being put in chokeholds for selling cigarettes. Everybody knows that that chokehold is illegal, and and if you watch the the Eric Garner video, shot to you know, hey listen, former wrestler. You know, current MMA practitioner. Okay? Everybody knows what a chokehold is. Everybody knows what a chokehold can do. You know, and, and, and 
that chokehold was applied with force with the intention to hurt that dude. I don't care what anybody said because they held his arms. You know, and uh, you know, it's very unfortunate that he passed away. You know, and this is just just another senseless act of violence by, you know, officers against civilians, you know? I'm not saying that civilians haven't done things done things to officers because yes, there have been incidents of civilians you know, hurting officers of the law. However, I can guarantee you that there are more cases of NYPD officers specifically firing upon civilians. And that's why, like I said, 384 million in five years. That's a lot of dough in five years of incidents of police brutality, ladies and gentlemen. You know, so I mean, they got to be paying out all this money. No. I mean, there's a reason. So, once again, you know, uh, police brutality, you know, everybody has their own opinion about it. Uh, you know, I want to hear yours. You just heard mine. You know, uh, if anybody, like I said, if anybody wants to publicly debate me on this, we could debate this at a later time. Four Fifth Management on Instagram, F O U R Five T H Management M A N A G E M E N T. Uh, you can link me on the Instagram. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Four Fifth Radio two o two two o three a m live from Sesh Studios. This is Mel Gibson, not the actor, your favorite MC's favorite MC, signing off. Peace. Focus and the stage, wine tastes better with age. Jesus' blood consumed by slaves. There there be light, light, so we can find our way. This is the final days of the final day.